it's a pleasure to introduce Laura Escobar uh, from Washington University at St. Louis, uh, who will tell us about wall crossing phenomena for Newton and Kunkov bodies. Oh, and the last thing I will say is that her uh, slides not annotated are available in the Discord chat as well, if you want to flip that. Yep, so thank you so much for the invitation and I'm very happy to give a talk. So this is all joint work with Megumi Harada and it's based on this uh, yeah, archive posting. So, and this is the rough outline that I'll talk a little bit about Polito's and algebraic geometry that hopefully you're all familiar, but in case, I mean, I, I, it's a good way to motivate Polito's and the theory of newton okunko bodies. Then I'll tell you some about newton okunko bodies, what they are. And then I'll tell you about the wall crossing that Megumi and I worked on. And at the end, very briefly, because we probably won't have time, I'll tell you just a little bit about the tropical Grassmannian because it's a very nice instance in which we can apply our theory. So first, um, well, since we're going to talk about Newton Okunko bodies, let's start by talking about Newton polytopes. So if you start with that, with that polynomial in N variables, then it's very simple. The Newton polytope is just the convex hull of the exponents of the non-zero coefficients. So I picked a very, very simple one. I just picked a, a polynomial of degree one and I take the Newton polytope of that polynomial and it, I just take the convex hull of three points. So this is corresponding to the constant coefficient. This is corresponding to X and this one is corresponding to Y and we get that triangle. And so this polytope will a lot of people, a lot of Russians in particular, were very interested in understanding, well, what can I read like from this point? Like if, for example, I construct a variety of a polynomial, what can I, like, does this polytope encode any information about the variety? And, well, there's many ways to answer this and the answer is absolutely yes, we can read a lot of very nice information. So one of the results of this Russian school is the bernstein hovansky kushnirenko theorem. And I mean, there's many versions of that theorem. I'm giving you one of them. So I'm gonna take S in like a subset of S elements in Z to the N and those are gonna be the allowable exponents of your polynomial. And you construct this um, vector space, which is it consists of all polynomials such that the exponents are chosen among the valid exponents. So like connecting it to the previous example, you can imagine that A consists of the three vertices of our triangle. And then if we look at this vector space, it would be all linear polynomials, non-homogeneous of degree yeah, in, in X and Y. So then what Bernstein, Hobansky, and Kuch, Nirenko tell us is that if you choose generically and generic polynomials inside your linear space, and you want to solve that's that system of equations. So if you look at the number of solutions, oops, I changed it to eraser, that's not good. The number of solutions to this, the system of equations where you said all oh, those n polynomials equal to zero inside the torus is gonna be equal to n factorial times the volume of the Newton polytope of any of those polynomials. Okay, so this is a, a very classical and, and very nice result that relates like the geometry of, of a variety with geometry of polytopes. So, um, and so just to be very, very, very concrete, focused, because I want to start with something friendly in case there's very young people in the audience, that like if we take, as I said before, A to be the set of vertices of, of this triangle, then in, in this particular case, you would be taking like C1, X1 plus C2, X2, no, well, yeah, I guess X2, plus one or plus C3, change it plus C3 equals zero. And then another one could be I don't know, D1 X1 plus D2 X2 plus D3 equals zero. And then, okay, so we have two lines, two lines intersecting one point. So we better come up like Bernstein, Kovansky, Kushner, and Kothirin better tell us that there's only one solution. And indeed, if you look at the Newton polytope, well, it's the one we have over there. So if you take two factorial times the volume of the triangle, you get indeed one. So this is just a sanity check in like the most basic example I can think of that, yes, this works. So this is like a, like one of the beginnings of, of a relation between algebraic geometry and polytopes. There's many flavors for that. 
But now let's maybe go and, and talk about Newtonokuka bodies. And so, well, um, yeah, so there's, in case you <laughs> probably are also aware that if you start with a polytope, well, there's a very nice classical way of constructing a variety, right? Which is a toric variety associated to a polytope that gives you a projected toric variety. And so in particular, um, one of like, and this is like one of the statements that gets repeated a lot when people are discussing toric varieties. It's that the combinatorics of the polytope and the geometry of the toric variety are very interconnected. So, and this is great and, and it makes them very fruitful to study them. In particular, like Stanley used it to use this connection to prove the F conjecture and where he used algebraic geometry to explain the structure of the F vector of polytopes. And on the other hand, there's also been on the other way around where like it has been used, this type of connection has been used in mirror symmetry, for example, by Patria. But for the, like to connecting to what we have in the previous slide, um, you can maybe rephrase, you can think of it as rephrasing the bernstein kovansky kushnirenko theorem um, into the setting of projective toric varieties and say, well, you start with a polytope, you take its toric variety, and then the degree of your variety is gonna be equal to n factorial times the volume of the polytope. So again, another instance of geometry and combinatorics in particular volumes, um, volumes of polytopes are encoding information of the variety. So newton okum bodies were born from a desire to generalize this to more general settings because not every toric, not every variety, not every projective variety is gonna to be toric. So it would be nice to have a more general theory where you can start with a projective variety. So here, oops. You start with a projective variety and you have some extra information, which is evaluation. And we will see that later on. And the output, you want to obtain a, a convex body. And hopefully the convex body, the volume is not too difficult to compute, but in any case, you want to compute a, a convex body such that the volume encodes the degree of your variety. And this is like one of the main applications, well, or, or like the application that gave birth to Newton Okunko bodies. So they were developed by Okunko, by Lazarus, Mustata, and by Kabe Kovatsky. I mean, Okunko encountered them, but then the other two papers, Lazar Burroughs, Mustata, and Kabe Kovatsky, they really developed the theory and, and studied that cons consistently. So what is evaluation? So I guess I maybe go back to the slide for a little bit and let me emphasize that. Okay, I, so this- Actually, uh, can, I, can I ask a question about that? Yeah. Um, so the value, I'm trying to, uh, so should we think of the valuation as being basically like a, an Apple line bundle or uh, or like a, how, how uh, maybe you were about to say that, but- uh, No, not really. So, so I mean, if you want to think about it geometrically, because to be honest, I think about valuations mostly in terms of uh, commutative algebra, but if you want to think about it geometrically, um, the choice of evaluation corresponds to a choice of a flag um, of varieties inside inside your projective variety. Um, uh, is it going to be so like, so should I think, okay, uh, now I'm sure I'm making, uh, what I'm going to say can't be right or it may be very confused, but is it like a, uh, is it like a, uh, so it's sitting in projective space and then I'm thinking mm -hmm. of it, the flag, by the flag you mean kind of like a, a hyperplane divisor on X and a hyperplane divisor on that, a hyperplane divisor on yeah. that. Yeah, like exactly, that. exactly. Yeah. And that's somehow going to give evaluation, which is going to be rank. Yeah. Is it going to be rank equal to the dimension or something? Or is it just. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Okay. yeah. As soon as you have a complete, a complete flag, of course, you can get partial flags and then, yeah, but, 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 yeah. Okay. Um, and then that yeah, evaluation. So the in particular, this valuation is not a discrete, I mean, for normal people who are used to discrete valuations, this is not necessarily rank one. So this is going to be weird. Uh, yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, yeah. And and the whole point is you don't want it to be rank one. Um, right. mm -hmm. It's a yeah. feature, not a bug. Great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. And so, yeah, yeah. Like the bigger the rank in theory, the more information you can get out of like whatever the output of this theory gives you. Mm -hmm. But as I said, I'll, I'll probably discuss it from the, I, I am going to discuss it from the point of view of commutative algebra, not so much the geometric, but, but yeah, you can definitely start with a flag and, and 
and use, yeah, this, yeah, you can use sections or, or like locally look at divisors or order of vanishings of, of whatever, like you have your flag and you have one order of vanishing the next one and the next one and the next one and so on. But anyway, that wasn't very clear. <laughs> Just it is possible. Okay, um, ah, and I was gonna say like, we like from at this point, it seems like this, I mean, this is a powerful theory. I don't wanna undercut it, but it, it seems like, oh, well, you can really like, I, I'm kind of underscoring like the evaluation part of it, but but we will see that that this part of, of evaluation is gonna be quite important and um, is gonna provide, like it's it's where you'll find difficulties in really applying the, the theory as with, to its full power. Okay, so what is evaluation from, from my perspective? So we're gonna start, and yes, yeah, you said the image is gonna be z to the n, not just in one z. So we are gonna equip z to the n with n a total order, any total order you'd like. And for us, I mean, the, the one that makes more sense to me is just lexicographic order. And what is evaluation? So evaluation is a function in the coordinate ring of, of, of x. Oh, sorry. That let me this happened before, so I need to stop share and restart share because something happens. So it's a little <laughs> starts updating and then it's not that great. <laughs> Maybe a break for people. Okay, now now we're where I want to be. So what is evaluation? So as I was saying before, we're gonna equip z to the end with a total order. And it's gonna be evaluation is a function from the coordinate ring minus zero to z to the n that satisfy these three four properties. And it, it more or less like if you think about them, you, they should feel like like uh, like Romner basis if you thought about it. So we will talk a lot about Romner basis and initial terms. So it's like picking an initial term of a polynomial. If you think about it, this looks like a lot of what about what should happen be happening. So in any case, so the, when you take the evaluation of two polynomials, you'll get the, that it, that's going to be greater than or equal than the maximum of each of the evaluations. Um, if you take the evaluation of the product of two elements of your coordinate ring, it becomes the sum. And um, the evaluation of a constant is going to be zero okay, whenever you have a non-zero constant. So, so this so can I uh, so to make sure I'm understanding and this is also actually I'm also I think Taylor is answering this question separately in this ah. it, it, it's like so I should think of I've got my variety x uh, let's say projected variety x and you've got your chain you have your uh, you have a divisor and then a small and they're all irreducible but they needn't be sections of the same line model at all so you just have a, a divisor and then a divisor on that and a divisor on that and, and then all the way down to maybe a point. And then what your n values are is you take your you take your function uh, the first one you just take your function find the order of vanishing for the second one you take the function it's got an order of vanishing divide by the right number to make it zero and then on that work out its order of vanishing and just go on like that so it's a bit okay okay mm -hmm. cool okay that's I can't, can't believe I didn't I hadn't heard of such a thing before it makes a lot of sense oh really. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, yeah, that's absolutely it. Um, and so, wait. Oh, ah, okay, good. And so, well, an example that I was hinting at that, as I said before, is not gonna, well, I mean, it's gonna agree with the geometry, but it's not gonna look geometric as, as, as presented. It's gonna be, well, um, really just taking the degree of a polynomial. So basically like, it's like a multi-degree, taking the multi-degree of, of a, of a polynomial. So if you start with a polynomial, you just look at the minimum among all the exponents were associated to non-zero coefficients, and that's evaluation on the on the on, yeah, on c of x1 up to xn. And and that oh before I say that this is like like uh SACB basis if you've heard of them that are semi algebra Gromner basis analogs. Um, that, that you can, this is like how that theory is evolved. So you can imagine that Newton open cup bodies and, and this whole theory evaluations that I will tell you are like an extension of that. And so using valuations, defining what a Newton open cup body is, is very straightforward. So the Newton open cup body associated to X and your valuation nu is just, you take the image of your valuation, you take the cone over that image, 
you intersect it with a hyperplane x1 equals 1, and you close that. And I mean, this is a bit technical because the evaluation can be extremely, extremely general. So it could be that you end up with like a circle, I mean, it's called a body, not a polytope. And so, so things like that force you to close. But ignoring those, those difficulties, uh, we, we did accomplish, or not we, but like the, the, the sighted people over here, accomplished the goal I, I explained in the previous slide, which they found a body you can take the volume of that body and they found a value such that the degree of your variety is equal to m factorial times the volume of the neutrinal group of body and well this kind of it's related and slash follows from um, another feature of, of, of this theory of evaluations and neutrino group of bodies which is that well if you want to understand the hilbert function of x in with respect to yeah it's a projective variety then you can use semigroups like this image of mu we will see in the next slide it's really a semigroup and you can use the hilbert function of the semigroup to understand the hilbert function of x but yeah so let's do an example just so that you can see that even though i mean yeah in from this point of view that i presented in the previous slide these neutral kunkka bodies are very complete so let's take a hypersurface. So we're going to take this hypersurface. It is what it is. And we're going to take this valuation. And the valuation is going to be as follows. So uh, the input is going to be this matrix. So the top row is 1, 1, 1. And the next row is negative 2, negative 3, 0. And then my valuation is going to be, I'm going to define it first on monomials. So I define it on, on a monomial alpha, beta, and gamma which is just we multiply your matrix by the exponent vector. So in particular, the evaluation of x is the first column, of y is the second column, and of z is the third column. So from a matrix, you can always, um, well, I mean, OK, is it well-defined in the coordinate frame? There's things that, that you need to take care of there. But in principle, from any matrix, you can construct a valuation in this form. So I define it on the monomials, and then the way you extend it to the coordinate ring is you just take the minimum. So this is very similar to what we had before. So you just uh, yeah, look at each monomial, what the valuation is, and you take the minimum among all of them. So yeah, it's an example. Ah, of course, I'm not telling you why it's a valuation, but it, like eventually I will tell you, yes, it is, because we will see some theory that tells us how to construct this sort of valuations from, from matrices. But yeah, just believe me for now, that is actually a valuation. And, well, what is the image? Let's compute its Newton Okoka body. So the image is going to be the semigroup generated by the columns of M. So, yeah, so here I, I plotted the, the semigroup in red generated by the columns of M. And so the Newton Okoka body is the cone over the image. So it's this thing in gray intersected with the plane x1 equals 1. So you would get something like, like this. This is the Newton Okunkov body. But I'll draw it again. Um, so notice in particular that the Newton Okunkov body is the convex hole of the columns of M. This happens to be true in this, in this case. Um, so in the, like when I define the Newton Okunkov body of a, of a variety with respect to some valuation, um, it, could, it seemed like it was going to be very hard to compute. And yes, in general, those are very hard to compute. But this one that came from a, a, a matrix that was chosen in a clever way becomes very straightforward. It's just the comments all of the columns. So, so in this case, in this, this example is really useful so I can see how the moving pieces fit together. So I should think of this as the first one is X. Oh, oh wait, I've forgotten the, uh, so you could have chosen, uh, uh, the, so you could have chosen an ordering where the first one was X and the second one was y after x and the third was z after y and then all would matter you can replace y by x plus y in that situation uh and you can play z by earlier things as well but now you're allowing yourself any crazy old okay so now at this point the uh, okay my head's hurting a little bit uh, the the it, it, so what matters is that it mattered that x equals you needed evaluation so it was like x equals zero and you needed x equals y equals zero to be reducible and x equals y equals z to be zero to be irreducible. Or maybe you didn't. No, you just have three different divisors, x, y, and z. And you are uh, 
by just count, you're just getting your, and you're just literally working out your order of vanishing along each of these three hits. Mm. Okay, so I, I'm not sure about this. So yeah, yeah, that... I'm not sure. Yeah, and that that would be very nice. Like I should do that exercise actually, just to to really see what the flag is. But I haven't done it, so yeah, I don't know what it would be. It would be very insightful. Yeah, I would learn a lot. So it would be very, it's worthwhile if you want to understand this. You can also do it and tell me in case I don't have my time to do it. Good, but yeah. So at least for some valuations, here we see this can be very concrete in. From definitely from this point of view. So, ah, so one thing to 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 motivate Newton Open Cup bodies was this the, is this theorem from Dave Anderson that he said that okay, so in general the Newton Open Cup valuations is too general of a theory. So in general your body can be very complicated, but it can it it can be a rational polytope like we saw in the previous slide. So when that very nice situation happens, you will have a degeneration of your variety to the toric variety of your polytope. So, if, so, and to be very concrete, it's just a one parameter flat family a over, over, sorry, not a n, over a1. So one of the nice things about using this, I can correct my types. So over a1, where the generic fiber is x and the special fiber is the toric variety of the need to know Kunkka body. And I should emphasize, like, as you saw, the image of, uh, of the valuation is a semi-group. And so we really, like, the, you have this very nice situation where the, the semi-group is finally generated. And so, but, like, knowing a priori, uh, like, before you, like, if you, someone gives you a random valuation, knowing if you actually have a finitely generated semi-group can be hard. And also, knowing how, like, this, this tells you, okay, so... The toric generations, at least from my point of view, are great because instead of studying this variety, you can understand a lot of its geometry from understanding the toric variety, where I know more tools to study that. But um, there's like this desire of finding valuations, good valuations, where you're guaranteed that they will, the output will be a polytope. So there's this very like important problem. Construct valuations such that the Newton open cup body is a polytope. And so one of the so so you have in this case it's uh okay so it, uh, if I can so in Dave Anderson's statement you have a so the valuation here is some higher rank crazy valuation in in right and that's an, and somehow it gets a, a, a you get something over a one not a not over the rank of the valuation you still get a one parameter family who's yeah right yeah 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 okay yeah. Okay, and oh, my tuple carried over. <laughs> yeah, no, and I should clarify one thing that um, in like some preprints by Cave and Manon that, that will appear here, they do deal with, with a more general families where in, they're not over A1, they're over toric varieties. So in some, in some sense, they, they worked on gluing a lot of these degenerations into one big family, um, which is, is very nice. Um, but okay, so going back to Cave and Manon, that I already mentioned them. So they, um, yeah, so Cave and Manon, they provided evaluations for, um, for protective varieties um, using tropical geometry that have this extremely nice feature that the Newton Okuka body is a rational polytope. So going back to the, what, what I just told you, then this is like a, a very nice way of constructing toric degenerations of varieties. A, using the machinery developed by Cave and Manon. So I'm gonna tell you a little bit about the machinery of Cave and Manon, a, how to construct this sort of valuations, and you will see it will tie up, you'll see where the matrix I told you before came from. So for that, um, I'm doing the easiest version of tropical geometry. In, a, yeah, a, it's the simplest case. So for that, I'm gonna define them, it to be that the tropicalization of an ideal is gonna be the set of points in Q to the n, such that the initial ideal of I with respect to W contains no monomial. So instead of, like usually when you take initial ideals, at least one of the first applications is to degenerate, um, to get a flat degeneration to a, yeah, to a monomial ideal. And, and that is great, but it has its limits. So instead, Let's do the second best, which is, okay, let's try to get no monomials. 
And just a quick review in case I don't know how often people think about initial terms. So this is very quickly just a review. So because it's an important concept of, of what we will do next. So an initial term, and it's just gonna feel in flavor similar to valuations because they're somehow related. So if you have a polynomial and you pick a W, then the initial term of a polynomial with respect to W, you just drop terms, drop terms of your polynomial depending on, on, on this inner product between W and the exponent. And you only stay with the ones that are minimum. So you, so W picks out some leading terms based on which minimize W dot A. And then if you have an ideal and you want to generate its initial ideal with respect to that W, you just take every polynomial in your ideal and take the initial form with respect to W, and that gives you in WI. And the tropicalization will care a lot about the ones that contain no monomials. <clears throat> and one of the, like, it's, it's a bit surprising. It's, it's very classical, but, but it's very surprising when you, when, you, when you learn about this is the fact that the tropicalization, this baby case of tropicalization has a structure of a fan. So it's a subset of Q to the N, but you can subdivide it, you can cut it into pieces in, in the following way. So the open cones, you define the cones, the open cones to be the set of points inside the tropicalization. So yeah, so let's take a W in the tropicalization and you're gonna construct a cone by adding to it all other Ws that give you the same initial ideal. So if you do that, you get some open cones and a, you take the union over all of those and that is the structure, that, that is the fan structure of your tropicalization. So like a, a quick example on what the structure looks like. So you can have an image to accompany it. So let's again take the ideal we've been looking at before, this hypersurface. And I, I should emphasize here that this is empty. So my fan is, um, if you've seen tropical talks, if it's the tropical line or the tropical, yeah, the first example of tropicalization, but in any case, the, this, these areas are empty. So this is not part of the tropicalization. And so you have three maximal cones and you also have this um, linearity space. So yeah, I, it should be, okay. So if you notice, for example, this cone is the cone of plus or minus one, 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 and then zero, one, zero, um, because there's like a line. So I just read in, 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 on, on my slide, but you should extend it up and down. So it's like a folded notebook. Um, okay, so you have those those three maximal cones, and you have this line that goes up towards you, and um, and there you have the different initial ideals that that correspond to each of the cones of maximal dimension. And sanity check, I didn't make a typo or a mistake. None of them contain a monomial, so that's good. So now Kavan and Manon said, well, we like, um, well, tropicalization has a ton of applications, but they came up with this one. They said, okay, so among all those initial ideals, let's only look at the ones that are prime. So a cone in the tropicalization is gonna be prime if the initial ideal is prime for some or any based on the definition of the cones. This should be clear why I wrote this, but um, is prime if, if this is prime, okay? So if we, of course, knowing which ideals are prime is not that straightforward, so I'll have to tell you. So among these three, this one is the only prime cone. So this one is prime. The other ones, well, I guess this one, I'm not sure. Maybe you're great at finding out if ideals are prime or not, but I'm not that good. So definitely this one is prime and it's the only one. And they took those and, okay, so if we think about it, there's like, um, um, yeah, they use these prime cones to construct valuations. So let's say we take a prime cone of the tropicalization, which we chose this one, this is going to be our prime cone. And now here's how they tell us how to construct the valuation. So you're going to take as many linearly independent vectors inside your cone as possible. And... Uh, using those, you define evaluation 
um, which is going to be just very similar to the example we had. But at this point, um, they tell you, okay, so from a prime cone, you can construct evaluation whose Newton of body is a rational code. So how does that work? So um, explicitly, um, this, this Newton of body is going to be the convex hull of the matrix where you take the rows are going to be, you write the rows to be your linearly independent vectors, and then you take the convex hull of the cones. So this is information from the previous slide. I told you that this one is prime. So if you construct the matrix, you can construct this matrix. And this is the matrix we encountered before. So based on the theory of Cave and Manon, we know that this is evaluation. Um, the, I mean, I didn't tell you what the evaluation is, but, but it's the, the way they constructed is the way we constructed in, in, in the previous example. And their theory also tells us then that the Newton of Kunka body is going to be the convex hull of those three points. Okay, so this gives us, so whenever we're able to compute tropicalizations, we, this theory of Kave and Monon give us very, very, very concrete and computational tools to compute a large families so of of Newton Okuka bodies for varieties. Now, let me tell you then what Megumi and I did. So one of the things that, that we care about for, for numerous reasons, for example, in, in terms of, of in, yeah, is, well, you get lots of different Newton Okuka bodies. How are they related? And, um, so what we did is exactly answer this in this type of setting because in general that question can be a little bit too general but here we kind of wanted to have a sense of wall crust and the structure of the of the tropicalization the fact that from prime cones you can construct valuations it gives you like some um, combinatorial way of organizing Newton Okunka bodies into a nice combinatorial uh, structure so in particular, you can say, oh, I'm going to, let's suppose I have two adjacent prime cones and they each of them give us um, a Newton Okunka body. And we can say, oh, for two adjacent ones, how does the Newton Okunka body change as you go from this one to that? So using this um, like way of, of encoding Newton Okunka bodies into um, the tropicalization or into a fan, we answered how do they change as you go from one adjacent one prime cone to another one when they're adjacent. So let's take two prime cones, C1 and C2, of the tropicalization, such that they're both of maximal dimension and they share a co-dimension one phase. <laughs> so then, well, using the what Kave and Manon told us to do, their, their, their toolkit, we're gonna take in, oh, sorry, in what? Ah, this. We're going to take D maximally or as many maximally independent, linearly independent vectors inside each of the prime cone, such that so when they're adjacent everywhere except in one dimension, then well, yeah, they, they share a co dimension one phase, then it means that I can pick vectors such that they agree everywhere except in the last entry. So one way you can think about it is, so like eventually we will draw the matrices, but if we have matrix one and matrix two, then you'll have vector u11 up to u1 d minus one. And then in the last row, you'll have the vector u1 d. And for the other one, it will be similar. D. So these two matrices should be the same up there, like in the first D minus one entries, and they should be distinct here. So this is just because it's in, in like, it seems a little bit restrictive, but actually like, um, there's one thing that maybe I should have mentioned and is that, okay, if you change your choice of linearly independent vectors for like you fix, you fix a cone and you fix different choices of linearly independent or, or matrices, you will get linearly isomorphic uh, polytopes. So this choice that I'm making on how to write the, the, the matrices is not really that strict. Okay, so this is the input for our theorem. And then uh, what can we say about it? So when we're gonna have three polytopes, we're gonna have the Newton-Okunka body 
for the, for the first valuation. So each of these cones gives us a valuation. So the Newton of Nicole body of, of, with respect to the first valuation, it's gonna be this delta one. With respect to the other valuation, it's gonna be delta two. And then we're gonna have, based on the structure of the matrices, we have a projection where if you forget the last entry or the last coordinate, they both project to the same point as we have over here. So the fibers of this projection restricted to each of the polytopes are gonna be intervals. So far, that's, that's nothing became too, too surprising, right? Because we just dropped dimension, but they're gonna be intervals of the same length up to a global constant. And so once you have that, that very special structure, then giving, like we can give piecewise linear maps between the two polytopes from delta one to delta two. And basically by, okay, so, so delta one is a union of intervals and, and they, each interval has the same length as, as the intervals of delta two. So you can think of like shifting, like one of the polytope can be obtained by shifting the intervals left and right until it reaches the other polytope. And the other, the other piecewise linear map that we obtain is just like, okay, so first reflect your polytope so that it still satisfies the, this condition in the previous picture, that if you, if you reflect this polytope, you will still have a polytope that if you look at the, it projects to the same as this one, and if you look at the fibers, they're intervals of the same length. And so you can first reflect and then apply this shifting of the intervals that I was mentioning before. Okay, so we obtained these two piecewise linear maps. So I was gonna I was gonna ask at some point for an example to see this, but that was an example right there. Like that was literally that was literally that that trapezoid parallelogram thing. Yeah, yeah, and it was literally and, an example. Like that's exact. Uh, yeah, 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 exactly. And 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 so you can even yeah, I, yeah, yeah, exactly. So this is um, yeah. I mean, it's to be honest, we were wondering this is actually achieved by evaluation, but. but we, but it might be right. It, okay, it's more. It might be. It might be. I don't know. We were only able to find triangles for some reason. But but in spirit, this this exhibits what is happening in the theory, right? You can think of moving each of these intervals to the right and arranging them in the right way, and so that this polytope, this trapezoid, becomes this parallel. And, and, and I have a, a question partially motivated by the chat, which is a really basic <laughs> question. You have a variety, and you have a Newton. You have a uh, Newton Kunkov body uh, 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 coming from, uh, and it's telling me something geometric. And I don't, mm -hmm. I, I, I feel like what this theorem is telling me something geometric that I don't understand because I don't yet, I have yet to really internalize what the Newton Kunkov body is telling me. But what this is saying is something like uh, whatever it's telling me, when you cross a wall, it's relating what it's telling me on one side, what it's telling me on some other side. Uh, that's and and so that's the thing where where I feel like there's like a, a moral there for me that I'm not yet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and 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 so so let me let me see. Okay, if there's no questions about the theorem, let me tell you a little a couple of or three remarks. And one will have to do with with what you're asking about what the consequences in, in terms of algebraic geometry. But anyways, so first, um, Ilton and Manon observed in 2017 because this project with Megumi started in 2017 in, in the fields thematic uh, com uh, what combinatorial algebraic geometry program back in 2017. So back back then, Ilton and Manon um, observed that this geometric well while crossing that we're talking about can be derived from the theory of complexity one T varieties. So these are um, this beautiful theory where, you know, I told you toric varieties correspond to, to polytopes, but then there's this theory that what, um, where instead of like in toric varieties, you have a variety with the action of a torus. And instead, and the, and the dimension of the, of the torus, the action is effective. So the dimension of the torus should be equal to the dimension of your variety. But for complexity one T varieties, the, the dimension of the torus is one less than the dimension of the variety. And it seems like you would lose a lot of power there in terms of like the combinatorics tell you about the geometry. But there's like this beautiful theory of, of P divisors and, and things like that, 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 that can be applied to understand this geometry while crossing. So if you're curious about that perspective, uh, Nathan Hilton wrote an appendix to the, to the 
to my paper with Megumi that you can find it in, in the archive that mm, yeah in the full in the file I told you at the beginning. Now the second remark that I want to make is that um, Nathan in this in this appendix he also interprets geometric ball crossing as a generalization of the combinatorial mutation of Akhtar, Coates, Galkin, and Caprice. <laughs> Caprizic. And so, and, and, well, I mean, it's this beautiful theory, um, this combinatorial mutation that they came up and, and they came up with it to understand the different toric generations of random manifolds. And, and using this interpretation, Nathan, so this is not written on the, on the, on the appendix, but using this interpretation, you can give Birational maps between different toric degenerations. So remember, I told you Newton Okunka body somehow encode toric degenerations, and then like we're, we're I'm telling you about a combinatorial mutation. So then the, the next question would be like, can you give a a, a, a birational map or like a, a, a yeah a map between the the, the resulting um, degenerations? And and yes, um, ah, using oh. this perspective, you can do that. So, so can I try? Yeah, I, I, I think what you're saying makes me be able to ask a better question, which is so. Ah. So, so for every, so for the for these Nunukunga bodies, you have your random variety. It degenerates into a torque variety, uh, mm -hmm. and you have and now because you have two somehow adjacent degenerations, uh, uh, so you have two prime codes which are somehow two adjacent degenerations, and they're mostly mm -hmm. similar. They're torque varieties, which means. They've got these big n-dimensional tori in them, but mm -hmm. they share an n-minus one-dimensional tori. So yeah, yeah. Thing, and you're sort of, what, but what's different is just one single C star or GM uh, that's, and, and somehow that's the, that's the thing which is getting flipped as you cross, uh, as mm -hmm. you, okay. Right. Yeah, 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 yeah. And so, yeah, and the third remark is that, so I didn't spend too much time talking about the semi-groups, but they, they've been lurking behind the, the the, the theory, I mean, we saw a semi-group in our picture. And so Megumi and I also give an algebraic wall crossing. So basically it's not a semi-group map. So the image of those two valuations are semi-groups, but this is not a semi-group map. It's just a bijection that preserves a, the, some nice parts of the structure. Like for example, our semi-groups have certain rankings, certain, or, or like certain natural, like, levels and, and the levels get bijected to the levels. Um, so there's some nice, certain nice properties in, in, that we preserve with um, an algebraic wall crossing. Um, so it's almost, it's almost a semi, in some sense, it's almost a semi-group map. Like it's not a semi-group map, but there's some precise way in which it's one off from being a semi-group map. Actually, I don't know. It's, it's, it, uh, I don't think so. No, I, I, I don't think so. It's, I don't know if this will make sense or not, but, Maybe it will, and, and if it does, it will give you good intuition. But um, what what happens is like we can use um, what? No, maybe I don't know if this is the right way to say it. But but in some sense, yeah, using initial terms, we can talk about the images. Um, okay, no, what I really want to say is that we can understand this using standard monomials. And um, no, I, I don't know how to say it. In a, in a good way, but yeah, it's not. It's it's really just a bijection. It, it it it's it's oh yeah. It's like with this theory of standard monomials that they're just like flattening rules that that people apply to standard monomials to to write one expression in terms of another, and and it somehow feels like that. Like our semigroup map is keeping track of the exponents if if you did the straightening rules of of standard monomials. So as I said, maybe it's not very helpful, but but that's the type of information. That's like the type of maps we have. Okay, could I ask, does it does it feel like a piecewise linear or piecewise defined semi-group map? Or not like that? Ah, yeah, that's a good question. So um, in instances, um, it this this semi-group map, so if you if, let me go back to that's a very good question, actually. So let me go back to the picture. Which picture? This picture. And um, here we have the semi-group and we have the Newton Okunka body. And we gave uh, a piecewise linear map of the green part of the Newton Okunka body. But but by intersecting with the with the semi-group um, or with a lattice, you can imagine that okay, maybe the 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 piecewise the, the piecewise linear map we gave um, is gonna be 
like when we restrict it to the semigroup, it's it's literally that semigroup map that we have. And the and the answer is yes, it can happen. Like it doesn't always happen. We have an example where it doesn't, but in in nice situations, we suspect maybe like like if you have a normal variety, then yes, it's gonna be piecewise linear exactly in that in the yeah, in that sense you're saying. So yeah. Oh, yeah thank you. Forget where it was. Ah, I see. Okay, here. Yeah. Oops. Okay. Oops. Okay. So, and just to be for yeah, like let me give you some idea of the of the proof because also you'll see this this um Taurus acting like this will dwell a little bit more into what Robbie was saying that. Okay, so how does the proof go? And I'll discuss the proof about the fibers being the same length because from there, giving the piecewise in your map is, is, is not hard. Like in combinatorics, it just gives it to you. It's not difficult. So how do we prove the statement about the fibers being the same length in the, in the geometric wall process? So since you have that, that each of the cones are prime, so the initial ideal with respect to that cone is prime, and uh, its maximal dimension, then the theory of tropical geometry, the baby tropical geometry we're using, tells you that this initial ideal is a toric ID. Okay, so it's binomial and prime. And the, the variety for this ideal is the toric variety of the Newton open cup body. So in just some notation, we're gonna let xi be the toric variety of the Newton open cup body with respect to valuation i, and y is going to be the, the variety associated to the initial ideal of the intersection of the two cones. <clears throat> so just because of Grosvenor theory, or when you take initial terms, this immediately tells you that they're flat families. So um, from the theory of initial terms, there exist flat families, so I'll call it x1 and x2, over a1 with generic fibers isomorphic to y, and special fibers, I, each of them isomorphic to x1 and x2. So we have two flat families. So y is gonna be, is degenerating this, this it's not exactly our x, but this y is, is degenerating into two different toric varieties via two different flat families. But um, we have that y is a complexity one, t variety. So there's a co-dimension one torus T acting on Y. And you can see that complexity one torus by looking at um, degrees, like it's basically, you, yeah, the, the fact that, it, it really does follow the fact that in order to take this initial term, it, like this initial ideal of CI is a refinement of this initial ideal. So that immediately like tells you that there's a co-dimension something torus, um, but yeah, so this is the collimation one towards acting on Y. And this, oh, sorry. I'm sorry, sorry, quick question. So um, in this case, these flat families are, they're trivial. The rest are trivial away from zero and then boom, they break into something. That's what I should, is that right? Yeah, yeah. That's great. In fact, they break simultaneously, they can break into this or into that and somehow you're doing, yeah. okay. So, and, and, and so should the picture be something like you have this one, you have your, you're doing this over A1 and you could have somehow one limit or another limit, so it's not separated and you're sticking in. in oh, the I see what you mean. Well, I, the way I'm thinking about it is like I have two different A1s, but, but, but you can glue them. And again, this, this gluing is something that Kavay and Manon do in follow-up papers, but, but yeah, yeah. So you can glue them um, because the, the cones are adjacent or you can think about them as two separate families. Yeah, absolutely. Either way it works. And okay, so very important that this co-dimension one torus acting on Y is a subtorus of the torus or each of the tori that act on, on our toric rights, exactly. And from this, you can take GIT quotients then, because when, when you take the GIT quotient of a toric variety with respect to a subtorus, it really amounts to like looking at fibers of projections. So the toric variety of a fiber in the, the fibers that, that we want to find the length of, uh, is the GAT quotient of your toric variety by this smaller dimensional torus at that point. So actually this is, okay, so I'm sorry, this is just so interesting, I'm, I'm going sideways with this. But, uh, <laughs> so in this family, thinking of the, right, so with this family, 
I'll say it in terms of two, that, uh, so if you have X1, let's see, right, if you have X1, we're thinking that you have a family over A1 that's trivial, and then over the central fiber, it's just X1. And so instead, it looks like what you're saying, that, uh, or translation, what you're saying, is that in this situation of a flat family over A2, and it's trivial mm -hmm. away from the x-axis union y-axis, and over the x-axis, it's like x1, and over the y-axis, it's x2, and then over the origin, it's the, it's that other thing that you, that the, the whatever you, like the thing corresponding to the, to the other, the, the third thing you mentioned, uh, the common degeneration. Yeah, the y, yeah, yeah. Ah, great, fantastic. Okay, great. And it's equivariant over a, great. And about the loss of the tor, oh, that's great, thank you. Yeah, and so, ah, okay. So wait, <laughs> where was it? Ah, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so we have that the, the we're gonna look at the GAT quotient of X by T at, at, at the fiber uh, or at that point. And then we can extend the action of the, of the smaller torus of the, to, to, the, to, the, to the families, to the flat families. And then we can take the GAT quotient of each flat family by T at, at the point where we want to find the fiber to get two flat families. And um, so we're going to use variation of GIT. So that's what we're, we're looking at here. So we're going to have two flat families um, each with both of them, sorry, have this generic fiber and each of them has this special fiber. So I, I kind of, in the picture that Ravi has, I kind of contracted everything that is T that over like T acts on, on a lot of these things. So I just contracted it all just to pay attention only to, to the remaining action. And then since flat families preserve degree, then we have this very nice um, yeah, sequence of equalities that the degree of, of like, this is the trig variety of the fiber. Um, so the degree is gonna be the length of the fiber. On the other hand, we also have that the degree is also the length of the fiber, which is equal to the degree of the generic fiber. And so this is how we can see that the lengths of the fibers are equal up to a global constant that I'm not worrying about right now. Sorry, can I ask a naive question? Yes, yes. Uh, so uh, what's the relation between the uh, Y and the original variety? Is there like a degeneration from the original variety? Yeah, from the yeah. Yeah, th there is also like whenever you take like an initial ideal, like you start okay. with the ideal of your variety, and, and we took an initial ideal. Whenever you do that, you have a degeneration. So that Y was some initial ideal. It didn't give you a binomial ideal, so the the resulting ideal wasn't um, uh -huh. binomial, so it wasn't correct. But but yes, there is a degeneration there. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay, and then just to finish, um, oh, well, okay. I don't have to go that quickly. Uh, this is very brief, just to, I wanna, like, I think, hopefully, like here, there's a lot to say because the combinatorics of, of the Grassmannian is very beautiful, but I wanna emphasize one aspect of it. So let GER 2M be the space of two planes in C to the M. And uh, we're gonna take its presentation or of the coordinate ring given by the Pucker ideal. So we're gonna embed it using the Pucker ideal. And then when we're in that setting, we can take the baby case of the tropicalization that I was telling you about. And now this, this is quite, quite beautiful. So, I mean, this is a very special situation um, that all the maximal cones of the, trop of the tropical Grassmannia are prime. And um, this is like, I mean, this, it's a hard thing to accomplish. Again, uh, Ilten and Manon keep say, okay, you can accomplish this for complexity one, T varieties, but in general, like in counting varieties for which this happens can be difficult. But the fact that the, the tropical Grassmannian um, has this feature tells us that really, well, we can apply the wall crossing theory in perfectly in this case, because we don't have to worry, like in general, like, if you give me a tropicalization and, and you tell me, okay, give me a wild crossing, I will ask you back, like I will return to you with a question, okay, give me two cones that are prime. And then you give them to me and then I'm like, wait, but are they adjacent? And so encountering two prime cones that are adjacent can be, can be difficult. So the fact that here you don't have to worry about that is, is very special. But um, just a remark to connect it with, with other areas of mathematics. 
okay, because yeah, I'm not giving too much information here, but it's just that the coordinate ring of the Grassmannian is a cluster algebra. So, and, and if you don't think about cluster varieties or cluster algebras, then roughly what the way you should think about this is that the Grassmannian has an atlas of tori, um, in, and then, so a cluster variety in some sense is like you have an atlas of tori that you flew and you flew using what people call a cluster mutation. So the transition maps between the different tori in your atlas are, are given by cluster mutations. And um, as expected, like the combinatorics of the Grassmannian is so beautiful that, that there should be relations among different things. So in, in, it happens that in this case, our flip wall crossing is a tropical, tropicalized toric mutation. And tying it back to, to one of the questions we had, we also have that in this case, um, when you restrict the flip map to the semigroup, um, I'm being a bit imprecise there, but, but roughly at A, you get the, the semigroup, the algebraic ball crossing we were, I was mentioning before. Yeah, but then that is all. Oh.